Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Fat Brands First Quarter 2024 Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants have been placed in a listen-only mode. Please note that this conference is being recorded today, May 1, 2024. On the call from Fat Brands are the Chairman of the Board, Andy Wiederhorn, and Co-Chief Executive Officer and Chief Financial Officer, Ken Kewick. This afternoon, the company made its first quarter 2024 financial results publicly available. Please refer to the earnings release and earnings supplement, both which are available in the investor section of the company's website at www.fatbrands.com. Each contain additional details about the first quarter. But before we begin, I must remind everyone that part of the discussion today will be including forward-looking statements. These forward-looking statements are not guarantees of future performance, and therefore, undue reliance should not be placed upon them. Actual results may differ materially from those indicated by these forward-looking statements due to a number of risks and uncertainties. The company does not, under, does not undertake to update these forward-looking statements at a later date. For a more detailed discussion of the risks that could impact future operating results and financial condition, please see today's earnings release and recent SEC filings. During today's call, the company will also discuss non-GAAP financial measures, which it believes can be useful in evaluating its performance. The presentation of this additional information should not be considered in isolation nor as a substitute for results prepared in accordance with GAAP. Reconciliations to comparable GAAP measures are available in today's earning release. I would now like to turn the call over to Andy Wiederhorn, Chairman of the Board. Please go ahead. Thank you, Operator. I'd like to begin this afternoon by thanking all of our team members, franchisees, and their dedicated employees across our portfolio of brands. Their unwavering commitment and strong execution have been the driving forces behind Fat Brands' continued strong performance and growth. Our trajectory over the last three years has been truly remarkable. We have expanded our footprint tenfold by strategically building a diverse portfolio that now includes 18 iconic concepts spanning over 2,300 locations worldwide across more than 40 countries and 49 U.S. states or U.S. territories. The results we'll discuss today underscore the vast potential of our multi-brand strategy and ability to drive long-term sustainable growth by leveraging our scale, shared services model, and deep franchising experience. During the first quarter, we grew total revenue 43.8% to $152 million, compared to $105.7 million in the prior year quarter. The increase was driven by the acquisition of Smoky Bones in September of 2023. System-wide sales in the first quarter grew $581.8 million, a 4.8 8% increase when compared to the prior year quarter. Turning to profitability, first quarter EBITDA was $9.4 million compared to $7.7 million in the first quarter of 2023, a quarterly increase of $1.7 million. And adjusted EBITDA was $18.2 million compared to $19.2 million in last year's first quarter. We remain focused on forwarding our three strategic pillars, one, organic growth, two, growth by acquisition, and three, increasing cookie dough and dry mix production at our Georgia-based manufacturing facility. Let me now provide updates on each of these pillars. First, organic growth. Our development momentum continued in the first quarter with the opening of 16 new units across our brands. We should open another 44 this quarter, keeping us on track to achieve our growth targets for 2024. In total, we project to open between 125 and 150 new units this year, a potential 20% increase from 2023. To further fuel this growth, just two weeks ago, we hosted our biannual Fat Brands Franchise Summit in Las Vegas with our franchisees, suppliers, and key stakeholders. We hosted over 1,660 corporate team members, franchisees, and partners, and celebrated our extraordinary growth and shared what's next for our business. At the event, we honed in on the summit theme, All Systems Go, which encapsulates our commitment to moving forward together, navigating industry challenges, and maximizing the synergies within our brand family. The energy level and the enthusiasm were contagious, and we again thank all who participated. 
At the Fat Brands 2024 Summit, we also offered incentives for franchisees to buy additional units and signed or planned to finish signing development deals representing over 100 new restaurants. Our pipeline in total remains in excess of 1,100 additional units to be opened in the coming years. We estimate this robust future unit growth will ultimately translate to approximately 50 to 60 million of incremental adjusted EBITDA, which will enable us to naturally delever our balance sheet as we scale the business over time. And while the summit itself was a meaningful financial investment for us, we expect to see a significant payback due to the large number of new development deals or actual franchise agreements signed as a result of this event, which in turn will lead to incremental royalty revenue each year going forward once these new stores open. As we've said before, a key area of strategic focus for us this year is driving accelerated growth within our polished casual segment, which consists of our Twin Peaks and Smoky Bones brands. Beginning with Twin Peaks, this sports lodge concept continues to produce industry-leading average unit volumes of around $6 million, with some of our highest volume locations in Florida generating AUVs between $9 and $14 million. During Q1, we opened three new lodges in Guadalajara, Mexico, Boardman, Ohio, and Doral, Florida, with two more lodges in Naples, Florida, and Rock Hill, South Carolina, planned for Q2. We anticipate opening 15 to 18 new Twin Peaks in all of 2024, closing the year with approximately 125 lodges. This will represent approximately a 51% growth in unit count in just three years since our acquisition of Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks growth pipeline is healthy with over 125 new franchise deals signed, paid, and committed to be built over the next five years. The planned unit expansion is expected to grow Twin Peaks system-wide sales to approximately $1 billion and increase the mix of franchise locations to between 75 and 80% of total unit count. The excitement we are seeing from new and existing franchisees to open additional Twin Peaks locations reinforces the concept's strong consumer appeal and compelling unit economics. In Q4 of last year, we expanded our polished casual segment with the acquisition of Smoky Bones, a full-service restaurant chain that delivers great barbecue, award-winning ribs, and perfectly seared steaks. We expect Smoky Bones to increase Fat Brand's annual adjusted EBITDA by approximately $10 million net of any conversions to Twin Peak restaurants. We plan to use the existing Smoky Bones portfolio of restaurants to help fuel the expansion of our Twin Peaks brand. Out of the 61 existing Smoky Bones locations, we have identified more than half of the units to be converted into Twin Peaks locations. This strategy allows us to rapidly scale Twin Peaks footprint, leveraging existing restaurants rather than having to build new restaurants from the ground up, which can take more than two years. Several of these conversions are slated to take place in 2024, with the majority occurring throughout 2025 and 2026. Recently, we started our first conversion in Lakeland, Florida. Additionally, we're working closely with the Smoky Bones leadership team on a plan to reignite brand growth through our proven franchise model. Our goal is to rebuild Smoky Bones footprint to the approximately 120 units that it had at its peak. We continue to work on our previously announced plans to take Twin Peaks public. While the timing and the size of the transaction is subject to market conditions and other factors, we are working diligently to expedite a successful transaction. Twin Peaks continues to produce industry-leading economics and has a deep pipeline of profitable growth, making this a strong move for both the brand and Fat Brands as a whole. We view an IPO or any alternative transactions as opportunities to monetize the business for the benefit of fat shareholders. Our priority is to use the proceeds from any transaction to deleverage the balance sheet. We are also planning to refinance our Twin Peaks securitization debt prior to the IPO. Looking to our other segments, Earlier this month, we signed our first international development deal for our Frizzoli's brand with Brewin Restaurants to bring 25 locations to Canada over the next 10 years, and the first units are expected to open in 2025 in the province of Alberta. We have a strong network of international franchisees that span across nearly all our restaurant concepts. This experienced operator, Brewin Restaurants, comes from within our Fabriger franchise system and is committed to launching and developing additional fat brands concepts in Canada. We are confident that expanding Canada is a natural first step for Fazoli's and becoming a, a leading global chain. Fazoli's currently operates 26, in 26 states and over 200 locations. We've signed a development agreement for 40 new Marble Slab Creamery franchise locations throughout Canada in partnership with our longtime partner, 
Canadian Ice Cream Company, Inc. The Marble Slab Creamery locations are set to open over the next 10 years with the first of the new locations slated to open by the end of 2024. This will bolster the brand's presence to 140 locations in the country and underscores our commitment to long-term fruitful franchisee relationships. Roundtable Pizza also signed a new development deal with franchisee AF Ventures LLC to bring a total of 10 Roundtable Pizza franchise restaurants to Oklahoma and an additional six franchise locations to Arkansas over the next six years. Both are new states for the brand. Finally, Fatburger made its long-awaited debut in Orlando with lines wrapping around the restaurant opening day. This follows our well-received entrance into the state last year with a new location in Tampa. Both locations are part of a 14-store development agreement in Orlando and Western Florida. We also continue our expansion with the use of our co-branding strategy. During Q1, we announced the grand opening of our first West Coast Johnny Rockets and Hurricane Wings co-branded restaurant. Following the resounding success of our first Johnny Rockets and Hurricane Wings co-branded restaurant in Washington, D.C. last year. Similarly to Fatburger and Buffalo's Express, Johnny Rockets and Hurricane Wings have a great synergy together as they are both family-oriented restaurant brands with loyal followings. Additionally, in April, we announced a new development deal to open 40 new franchised Fatburger locations in Northern California inside 40 existing roundtable pizza locations over the next 10 years with the first location set to open in 2024. Since opening our first co-branded Fatburger and Roundtable Pizza in the Dallas area last year, we have seen significant interest in this pairing from our franchisee base. The strategy is not unsimilar to the success we have had experienced with our over 100 co-branded locations of Fatburger and Buffalo's Express, and separately, at or more than 100 Marble Slab, Creamery, and Great American Cookies co-branded locations worldwide. Also, I'd like to mention our continued success in the growth of non-traditional units across our brands, in locations like airports, cruise lines, amusement parks, universities, casinos, etc. For example, we are now operating Johnny Rockets on approximately 15 Royal Caribbean cruise liners. Both Fabrikers and Johnny Rockets in multiple Six Flags theme parks, as well as partnering with several prime operators in a number of airports and universities. Moving on to our strategic pillar number two, growth through acquisitions, We are assessing several new potential acquisitions at this time. Currently, we are looking at opportunities that add significant strategic value, similar to how we bought Smoky Bones to fuel growth at Twin Peaks and how we bought Nestle Toll House Cafe to boost our manufacturing facilities utilization. When evaluating acquisition targets, we must ensure the brand is both scalable and synergistic with our existing platform and when possible, leverage our existing manufacturing capacity, which brings us to our third strategic priority our Georgia-based manufacturing facility. Our manufacturing plant produces pretzel mix and cookie dough for brands within our portfolio. During Q1, our manufacturing facility generated 9.5 million in sales, a 3.4% increase over the prior year. Additionally, it contributed $3.7 million to adjusted EBITDA. Currently, our factory business is operating at about 45% of its capacity, up from 33% almost three years ago when we purchased the asset. Not included in that percentage is the three and a half acres of excess real estate the factory sits on, which can be expanded onto. Also, we can further double the factory output capability if we have demand by making a modest $1.5 million capital expenditure. As a result, we see significant white space opportunity within our factory business. To increase utilization, we have leveraged our portfolio of brands by enhancing our dessert offerings, selling cookies and other products made at the facility within these restaurants. Additionally, we are actively involved in several RFPs for various third parties to use our facilities to produce their cookie dough and dry mix type products and utilize our excess capacity. Lastly, I would like to provide an update on the growth and the work of the Fat Brands Foundation. As mentioned earlier, we hosted our Fat Brands Summit two weeks ago. The foundation was a key element at the summit, hosting our first ever giving back event with Three Square, Southern Nevada's only food bank and the area's largest hunger relief organization. Attendees helped pack nearly 6,000 meals for family. Further, the foundation was happy to deliver a $10,000 grant to supply 30,000 meals to the food insecure in the area. The foundation board also hosted several on-site fundraising efforts, including a raffle and silent auction, raising over $75,000 to support nonprofits in Fat Brands communities. 
to recognize this tremendous achievement, FAPRANS is donating an additional $50,000 for the further, to further the critical work of the foundation. This will bring the 2024 available foundation funds for grants to more than $300,000. It's worth noting that FAPRANS Inc. underwrites all SG&A for the foundation so that all money raised, 100% of it, is spent on gifts to deserving organizations. In summary, I have the utmost confidence in our exceptional leadership team and the robust pipeline of growth opportunities that lie ahead, which will naturally delever our balance sheet. Our long-term strategy is to create value through the organic expansion of our existing brands, acquire additional brands that strategically complement our portfolio, realize value from strategic divestments when appropriate to manage outstanding debt, and ultimately increase long-term value for our stakeholders. We look forward to providing updates on our progress during future calls. We sincerely appreciate your participation today and your ongoing interest in Fat Brands. And with that, I would now like to hand it over to Ken to discuss our financial highlights from the first quarter. Thanks, Andy. Total revenue during the first quarter increased 43.8% to $152 million, driven by the acquisition of Smoky Bones in the fourth quarter of 2023 and revenues from new restaurant openings. Costs and expenses increased $48 million, or 45.6% in the first quarter. Included in costs and expenses, general and administrative expense increased $1.6 million, or 5.6% to $30 million in the first quarter from $28.4 million in the prior year period, primarily due to the acquisition of Smoky Bones in the fourth quarter of 2023. Costs of restaurant and factory revenues increased to $99.1 million in the first quarter of 2024, compared to $59.1 million in the prior year quarter, primarily due to the acquisition of Smoky Bones again during the fourth quarter of 2023. Depreciation and amortization expense increased $3.1 million to $10.2 million in the first quarter, from $7.1 million in the year ago quarter, primarily due to the acquisition of Smoky Bones, again, during the fourth quarter of 2023, and depreciation of new company-owned restaurant property and equipment. Advertising expense varies in relation to advertising revenues and increased to $12.6 million in the first quarter of this year from $10.5 million in the year ago period. Total other expense net for the first quarter of 2024 and 2023 was $33.4 million and $30 million, respectively, which is inclusive of interest expense of $34 million and $30.1 million, respectively. Net loss for the quarter was $38.3 million, or $2.37 per diluted share, compared to a net loss of $32.1 million, or $2.05 per diluted share in the prior year quarter. On an as-adjusted basis, our net loss was $32.9 million, or $2.05 per diluted share, compared to a net loss of $23.5 million, or $1.53 per diluted share in the prior year quarter. And lastly, EBITDA for the quarter was $9.4 million, compared to $7.7 million in the first quarter of 2023, and adjusted EBITDA for the quarter was $18.2 million, compared to $19.2 million in the year ago quarter. And with that, Nick, please open the lines for questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star, then one on your touchtone phone. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. If at any time your question has been addressed and you would like to withdraw your question, please press star, then two. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. The first question comes from Alton Stump with Loop Capital. Please go ahead. Great. Thanks for taking my question. Um, you know, I guess first I want to ask him, you know, I do apologize if I, you know, happen to miss this, Andy, during your presentation. But, you know, utilization, uh, you know, at your cookie factory obviously is a big opportunity. Could you update us on, you know, where the utilization is now, say, you know, versus this time, you know, last year and, you know, kind of where it could head over the course of the year. Yeah, it's, a, it's a roughly 45% today, Alton. And, uh, you know, that's before we pull any of the levers to give us even more capacity. So it's, it's 45% as built today, but of course it can double in capacity by a, a small investment in equipment. 
and that's without even using the excess land. We are um, we have rolled out cookies and dessert items at a number of our brands. We have a few brands left to go that are more in the casual dining and polished casual segment. So we expect to get some more traction there that will um, soak up some more capacity. And then we are testing some third-party manufacturing relationships right now, which we expect, uh, you know, if they go well, could really soak up that capacity um, by the end of the year. So we're very excited about the progress we've made. Um, last year, uh, um, you know, 12 months ago, capacity was was uh, somewhere in the in the lower 40s, or utilization, sorry, was somewhere in the lower 40s, but now it's it's moved up a few um, ticks. Okay, great. Thanks for that caller. And then, um, you know, I just want to ask about Twin Peaks. Obviously, it's, uh, you know, it's an excellent brand, growing very rapidly. You know, of course, you mentioned the opportunity, you know, to use Smoky Bones conversions. Um, you know, as you kind of look ahead to 2025, knowing, of course, that you have to get, you know, any guidance yet for next year, but just, you know, how quickly do you think that the pace of builds could pick up, given the fact that you obviously now have the Smoky Bones you know, opportunity to convert? Well, we, you know, we have this um, 15 to 18 store target for 2024. The issue really is that the 2024 locations were already identified uh, in 2023 by franchisees and by the company for corporate stores. So it's, it's not really the conversions, many of them, there'll be a few that happened this year. It's really 25 and 26. But in those years, both franchisees and, and corporate locations will, you know, will accelerate that opening. So it, it should be somewhere in the 20 to 25 units per year, not 15 to 18 units. Great. And then just, you know, as a follow-up to that, I was going to ask, you know, as you mentioned that, you know, if you are building ground up, it could often take a couple of years to build Twin Peaks. You know, ballpark, you know, how long is it? take to convert i assume obviously not as long as that but just uh you know given the fact that, that you know i just point out you know you only bought this business uh you know just over six months ago and so you know i guess you know, what would be the timing if you you know were to decide now to convert you know a location on average until it could actually be opened as a you know twin peaks yeah so we have the first one underway now in lakeland florida it's 120 250 days for the first one but we think Going forward, you know, knock on wood, there'll be 120 days to convert them. So very quick compared to, you know, all the other things that you do. Now, to be fair, when you identify a site, maybe it takes nine months from start to finish because of permitting and all of those things that have to go on. But once you break, uh, you know, the construction hammer and, and you close the restaurant and start the conversion, it's somewhere around 120 days. So, you know, very quick. Great. Thanks so much for the caller. I will hop back in the queue. You bet. Thank you. The next question comes from Joe Gomes with Noble Capital. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking my questions. Hi, Joe. So just on the, the same store sale drop, I mean, I've seen it headlines and some of the other restaurants seeing the same uh, thing. Um, I don't know if you guys break this out or if it's possible to, to kind of get a, a feel, but, you know, how much of that same store sale decline is due to traffic and is our or maybe price reductions at some of the franchisees. Well, I think the way to think about it, I mean, there there is you know some difference between our QSR segment, our fast casual segment, our our casual dining and polish. I mean, all, all of those segments have different numbers. We don't report or break them out that way, but just as a as just to give you a little color, like our snack brands, like cookies and ice cream, pretzels, um, things like that. Um, you know, they're, they're trending, you know, in a, in a pretty good direction here. And um, they're, they're just not off by much at all anymore, if, if even that. But uh, you look at our casual dining where you could look at Ponderosa and Bonanza, the steakhouse chains, and, and they're up over somewhere between 5 and 6% right now year to date. And, you know, that's a value trade, right? That's, a, that's customers finding value that are pressured by, you know, dollars to spend. Um, we started the year like everyone else, you know, in a really tough January. Sales were off, you know, significantly because of the weather everywhere, and they've been coming back um, period after period. So here we are, you know, four periods in, and the negative numbers are much um, less so than they were to start with. If you if you add everything up, and so you know, we're encouraged that things are improving, but it is a little bit different um, where you are in the value spectrum of price. Okay, thanks for that. And on the uh, the uh, Twin Peaks, um, I know you, you, you talked about you know it's kind of market conditions, but we have seen some other restaurant IPOs. Is there something 
that you kind of you're waiting for or, or that is is you know unique to Twin Peaks that um, you know it's, it's not a go it's not a go yet for for an IPO. So we are working very hard, very diligently on this IPO. Uh, we hope to be on file very soon, and we will announce that we confidentially filed when we when we do file. So everyone will won't be in the dark. They'll know that at least we filed. It will be a confidential filing, but everyone will know. Um, we have to because we're putting Smoky Bones together with Twin Peaks in terms of one organizational entity, so that when the stores are converted, it's it's easy inside the same you know entity. We had to get a new audit of, of Smoky Bones for all of 2023, and we didn't own Smoky Bones for all of 2023, so it's taken a little bit of time. But that's actually um, expected to be completed by the end of this week, and so um, you know we're hopeful that we'll be on file here um, very shortly. Okay, and then on the the Smoky Bones that you know you're, you're talking about converting here, do you expect them to to maintain them as company stores, or do you think they would be refranchised? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so somewhere between uh, two thirds and three quarters of them will be franchised. The balance will be company owned. It's really uh, depends on the geography. So if it if it's already in a franchisee territory, we would expect one of the existing franchisees to take on that conversion. And if it's in a market that's a corporate market like Texas or part of Florida or the Mid Atlantic or something like that, then we would operate it as a corporate store. And if it's in a market where we don't have a franchisee yet. We'll either get a franchisee to reach into that market or we'll do it as a corporate store. So either way, we, you know, we've identified the stores that can be converted and things that, that restrict you know, which stores can be converted or not. There may be landlord restrictions on the percentage of alcohol that can be sold. Um, it could be some other you know, lease provision um, you know, that restricts um, you know, other things about the business. So, you know, the, or we may already have a Twin Peaks nearby, so it makes no sense to have a second one. So and you know, Smoky Bones is our second highest AUV concept with more than a three million dollar AUV, and we really want to grow that brand. It's a great brand. It's great food. Uh, it used to be 120 units, and our franchise sales team is is um, in the thick of it to get that brand ready for franchising. Whether we refranchise existing company-owned stores that we retain, or whether we just sell new stores, um, all of that is in the works. Okay, and one, one more, if I may. So the number of new store openings in the first quarter was a little bit lighter than I, I would have expected. You did mention you think you're going to get 44 or so open in the second quarter. Um, you know, how confident are you that's a pretty big jump from the 16 that were in the first quarter? Was there something particular to the first quarter that kind of you know, slowed down the opening uh, growth? No, no question. It's it's heavily, you know, back-ended here for Q2. But what you see in Q1, I mean, you had just, you know, ridiculous weather in January uh, in so many markets, so that slowed down people on their opening schedules and, and um, training and, and just everything you could, see, you know, delivery of equipment, everything you can think of happened. So here we are with uh, a number of additional stores that have already opened in Q2. I don't think we've released that number, but we've already made substantial progress uh, towards additional units through the month of April, and so you know we feel pretty good that we'll we'll get to that 44 unit number by the end of June. Great, thanks, Andy. I'll get back in queue. Thank you. This concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Andy Wiederhorn for any closing remarks. Maybe I would just make sure that no one else has any other questions before um, we end the call. Okay. Again, if you have a question, anything. please press star, then one. All right. Back to you, Andy. I'm sorry. Very good. I'd like to thank everyone for joining the call today, and this concludes our Q1 recap. Thank you. Have a good day. The conference has now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect.